Hello, how are you doing? It's Mike here again. And in this last video, it's a part of a series. It's actually a series of three videos. In this last video, we're going to discuss how to determine the grams, the mass of the excess reagent that remains in the reaction after everything's already completed. So this is the third step of this problem. So one problem actually can have so many steps. It can be very intricate and very involved. So again, these take a lot of practice. They really have to be thought through, there has to be a plan of attack that's set into motion, and it really helps to do these two or three times, at least, at least once or every other day. That way when you take your chemistry exam, you're prepared and you have them thoroughly understood. So in the first video, we were given that we had C2H6, and it's a ethane molecule, it reacts with oxygen, molecular oxygen, diatomic oxygen, the exact same thing, and we had determined the limiting reactant. We determined the limiting reactant was the oxygen. In the next video, we had determined the mass of carbon dioxide produced, and we were able to determine that to be 73.9 grams of carbon dioxide. In this last portion, we have to determine the mass of the excess reagent that remains in the reaction. We say, whoa, that sounds rough. So let's go ahead and let's just say, let's just you know present a, an example. I'm just gonna talk about baking a cake. So let's say that we're baking a cake. In order to make one cake, I'm just gonna assume this to be a really easy cake, it's probably really poor, but I need one pound of flour and I need four eggs. Four eggs, I need four eggs and one pound of flour. Let's say, let's say that I, let's say I have I have, let's say I have uh, 15 eggs and I have three pounds of flour. Actually, let me make this same color so that makes it easier on the eyes. I have 15 eggs and three pounds of flour. So three pounds of flour. So let's say that we go through and we talk about what happens when I make one cake. So if I make one cake, I have used one pound of flour, one pound of flour, and I've used four eggs. I could have written this to be the same way. I don't know why I screwed that up, but um, actually, let me just make this easy. I could read the whole video. But let's say that I use four eggs and one pound of flour. There we go. So let's say I want to make two cakes. I want to use up all of my batter my uh, my supplies I want to make two cakes I want to make two cakes so two cakes require me to use eight eggs and two pounds of flour okay I want to keep using up everything that I have let's say I want to make three cakes here I would now use I would use 12 eggs and then I would use three pounds of flour so notice oh my goodness I really made this problem horrible. <laughs> so, oh yeah, no, no, I'm sorry, yeah, no, that's right. Um, that, I had that right the first time. So, whoops, oh my goodness, there we go. So notice, every, every one cake that I make, I wanna use four eggs and one pound of flour, one pound of flour. I have 15 eggs and three pounds of flour. Notice, the most that I can make here is three cakes. So imagine if I said flour plus Eggs, I'm sorry, flour plus eggs yields a possible cake. This is the way I look at it, but now when I evaluate this, this is the amount required. This is like the moles. So this is like me saying that for every four eggs and every one pound of flour, I make one cake. That's really what this is translating into. This is the stoichiometry of making a cake. But notice here, that after three, after three cakes, I use 12 eggs and three pounds of flour. I've used up, I used all the flour. I used all the flour. Therefore, since that's the first thing to run out, flour is my limiting reactant. Flour is my limiting reactant. And the eggs, the eggs are my excess ingredient, but in chemistry we call them excess reagents. But how much excess did I have left over? I start off with 15, and I used up 12, so I have three eggs in excess. So hopefully I didn't confuse you with 
the way that I wrote the problem, write the simple problem, but, but use this as a way to help determine this last, this last question. So now, whenever we want to start out with chemistry, we always want to use the mass of the limiting reactant. So we're going to start out using that 94.0 grams of oxygen. But we know that this guy, this guy, the C2H6, he's going to be the excess reagent. He's got, he's got extra left over. We want to determine how much extra we got. So based off the limiting reactant, we have to determine how much of the C2H6 we're going to use. So let's go ahead and start with that and see what we have. So we're going to start out with 94.0 grams of O2. And we're going to multiply this times one mole of O2 per, we know one mole of O2 gives us 32.0 grams of O2. We got that. That was actually given the problem, but we could have calculated the molecular, the molecular weight if we wanted to, but it was given to us in this problem. And now we recognize this relationship. There are seven moles of O2 required for two moles of C2H6, of the ethane, just like we required four moles of eggs for every one mole of flour. We required four eggs for every one pound of flour. That same relationship can be made here. We need seven moles of O2 per every two moles of C2H6. So we come on down here, we can now use that. So we know that we require seven moles of O2 for every two moles of C2H6. Two moles of C2H6. Two moles of C2H6, seven moles of O2. And then lastly, we need to determine the mass of C2H6. So we're just going to go ahead and multiply that times the molecular weight. And we know the mass of the C2H6 is 30.0 grams per mole, which is also means one mole of C2H6 for every 30 grams. So we have one mole of C2H6 for every 30.0 grams of C2H6. So now when I go through, I can calculate this. I'm going to use my calculator to do so. And you can check using your own just to make sure we're on the same page. We have 94.0. Now I'm going to divide this by 32. 32.0 and 32 are the same on the calculator. I multiply this times 2 and I hit enter. I divide this by 7. I don't mind taking an extra second to make an extra step. And then I multiply this times 30.0 grams of C2H6. And we get 25.178. So 25.178. So we now uh, get 25.178 grams of C2H6 used. So we're going to do an interpretation. But before, I just want to make sure to show you that my units canceled. My grams of O2 canceled my grams of O2. My moles of O2 here canceled my moles of O2 down here. My moles of C2H6 canceled my moles of C2H6. And lastly, I was left in grams of C2H6, which is what I wanted to recognize. I start off with three sig figs. I'm actually going to cut off my sig figs right here. And I recognize at this point that I'm going to cut this off right here. So I recognize that I have used 25.2 grams of C2H6. So I like to do a physical interpretation. I like to do a translation. That's what I call it, a translation. So my translation. So let's talk about a translation here. Translation. If we react 94.0 grams of O2 with C2H6, we will need 25.2 grams of C2H6 to complete the reaction. To complete the reaction. So if we want to react all of that molecular oxygen, we need 25.2 grams of C2H6 to complete that reaction. If we don't have 25.2, we can't react on 94. But remember, look what we were given in this problem. Look what we were given in this problem. We know in this problem that we had, look at this, 190.4 grams of C2H6. We were given 190.4 grams of C2H6. We were given 190.4 grams of C2H6. 
and we used we used 25.2 grams of C2H6. So if we want to find the excess, look what we do. We, we want to find the excess, and we have excess because we determine oxygen to be the limiting reactant, which means that we're going to run out of oxygen first. All we're going to do is that we're going to take these two values and subtract them. So when we subtract them, we're going to get two here. We get the decimal, and this will give us five, and this gives me a, uh, so as a, we got nine, that gives us eight, that gives us six. 165.2 grams of C2H6, which means we have an excess of 165.2 grams of C2H6. And we expected that because we use up all of the molecular oxygen, all 94.0 grams of the molecular oxygen, and we're left with 165.2 grams of the ethane. So again, this problem is very complex. There's a lot of intricate steps that are involved with it. So definitely take your time and practice this and understand it. Maybe go ahead and replace some numbers, replace some values, and determine if you get the same outcomes as working with your friends. It makes it much easier to practice this with someone and understand the intricate steps that are involved with this question. So take your time, understand it, watch this video as much as you need. Any questions, make sure to shoot me an email. I wish you guys the best with your studying, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.